the smooth green velvet texture of an established lawn makes a perfect complement to the flowers growing in the beds round. I get immense satisfaction, particularly when I've just cut the lawn, of sitting and looking at it. It's the most restful colour of all to the eye and it changes texture. It's different in the morning light to the evening light. Now you can put features in a garden, you can put a rock garden, you can put a pool, you can put a shrub border. But if they're not linked together, it's not a landscape. And the lawn does that to perfection, but you've got to work at it. It's no use sowing grass and thinking it's going to look after itself apart from being cut. You're really working on the lawn from early spring until late autumn with your spiking, your feeding, your mowing to bring out all the gorgeous texture that you get in well-kept grass. Now around in the back garden, I did have a problem. So where do you start when you've got a piece of bare earth and you want to turn it into grass? Looks a bit rough, but then a lot of people have a garden that looks precisely like that. Probably the builders have just left it, but in this case, I've been trampling all over it, building the wall. It's compacted. It's all hills and holes. And my way of levelling this off will be to dig it, because with a spade I can achieve at least a rough level, and I can complete the process by raking it down. So I'm going to dig it, starting at that end, getting a level to match up with the edge of the existing lawn. And then I'm going to turf it, because what I'm doing is picking the whole axis of the garden up and changing it from a little niggly square lawn with no shape at all to what I hope will be a nice sweep of grass leading through to a beach head, through into my vegetable garden. Really is amazing how you can transform a rough piece of ground just with a spade and a little application. I find it very satisfying looking at a newly dug plot of earth and just imagining what you can do with it. Well, I know what I'm going to do with that. I'm going to put some fertilizer on first. Fertilizer that contains a lot of superphosphate because that stimulates root action and enough nitrogen to encourage top growth without overstimulating it. No use feeding grass before it gets its roots actually into the soil. Once they're in there, then I can feed it and, and get it away. But normally, I would wait with a piece of digging like this before turfing for what? A fortnight to let it settle. But I can't do that because I've got the turf on the site now. I've been held up by the wet weather. So I'm going to tread it hard. After I've raked the fertilizer in, I'm going to tread it to get rid of all the air pockets because I'm the one that's going to have to cut and maintain this lawn. And you can't cut and maintain a lawn that's all hills and holes, not easily anyway. So always when I'm gardening, basic preparations, vitally important, they should be right. No use skimping those because no amount of effort after that will put it right. So I'm going to fertilize it, I'm going to rake it, I'm going to tread it firm, I'm going to get the finished level exact, and then I'm going to put my turfs on. It's as simple as that. I'm aiming at a firm base with about ooh, three quarters to an inch of loose topsoil. And then my levels will stay right. Now I'd rake that over and it looked level. But it isn't, so you've got to level it up. Take a little extra soil. So it stands proud and refirm it. <laughs> are good turfs. They've been cut by a machine, about an inch thick, nice fine grass, no sign of weed, that's what's to look for. You're paying for it and you'll probably be paying top price. Very fine leaved grasses, that really is a, a superior turf, no question about that. Should be a pleasure to lay that, provided everything else is right and I'm pretty certain it is. I don't really need the board at the moment because I'm working from the original lawn edge. I don't bother an awful lot about 
tamping down as long as the whole of the base of the turf is in contact with the soil. Always work off a plank. Don't ever walk on the newly laid turf and work facing the unturf part. Overlap your joints as if you were laying bricks so that one crack doesn't follow on after the other. Butt them up tight. And if you've got any cracks, and there shouldn't be any gaping cracks at all if you tamp them up tight, I just go over afterwards and fill them up with a mixture of good potting compost and a little bit of grass seed in it. Make sure the level, you don't need to hammer them down with the tamper, but I always, just as insurance, press them lightly. Don't hammer them because that overcompacts them again. And <laughs> the only other thing you've got to remember is to keep them green side up. Apart from that, it's as simple as anything, really, and more satisfying. And that's the finished product, the nearest thing to instant gardening yet devised. And all I've got to do is patch up the corners there, trim off to even it off, and fill the corners beside the wall. When you've got awkward corners to edge off like that, you want a really sharp implement, and I use a bill hook. But a carving knife or even a very, very sharp half moon would do it just as well. And Use up all your odd pieces of turf. Don't go wasting anything, because it is very expensive. And pop it in like that. Make a measure like that. Draw your line along to give you the mark. And then put it on the board. And be very careful if you're using a sharp tool to cut the turf. Then it'll cut your fingers just as easily. So. Make certain that your aim's right. That's grand. And then all you do is carry on round the edge. You may need to fill in with a mixture of soil and grass seed just to knit it together. But apart from that, just carry on round the edge, taking your time, filling up all the gaps. Surfing a lawn is the quick way of getting an instant sward of grass. Seed sowing takes a little bit longer, but the basic soil preparations are very much the same. I've dug it, I raked it down roughly with the heavy rake to get the levels more or less right, to give me an idea of where it wanted filling in and leveling up. And then I put a base dressing on, a pre sowing base dressing, so that when the grass seed germinates, it's got something to bump it up quickly. I want it covering the ground before the weeds get a hold. A little bit of firming where you can feel the puffy patches, in other words, the gardener's shuffle. And now I'm ready for the final rake down, and then I'm going to sow grass seed at an ounce to the square yard. And for sawing the lawn, I put a line down, which gives me a straight edge to work from. That's the vitally important thing. Otherwise, you get all mixed up. And pull your line tight and peg it in tight. And instead of having to mark the whole plot out with garden lines, which is a time-consuming business, there's a little trick I use, and that is to make a yard square with garden canes, and then using the garden line as your guideline, just to drop it down like that. Now, that is a yard square. I'm going to sow an ounce to the square yard, and an ounce, because I've weighed it, 
is one of my hands comfortably full. One thing I never economize on if I want a lawn to look right, and that's grass seed. I don't buy the bowling green mixture, I buy the next grade down. It's a very good quality mixture. It'll give me a nice looking lawn. When you're sowing anything to the yard exactly, make certain that what you've got in your hand covers the whole lot and then go back over again. And then all you do, move your square again, to sow another handful. There's two seasons when you can sow. One is in spring, which I'm doing, when the soil is beginning to warm up and when the growing conditions are right. Or about the middle of August, when the dews are heavy enough to moisten the seed and it germinates there. Well, in August, about five days. At this time of the year, a little bit longer, probably a fortnight. Keep doing that, right down the plot, and then back up the plot until the whole lot's evenly sown. And then very gently and lightly, you rake it in. Just wants to be covered so it's there where it's dark and moist in intimate contact with the soil and that gets the grass seed up quickly. And I shan't touch it anymore. It's raked in, it's there doing what seed's supposed to do, growing. But I wait until, what, it's an inch and a half high and then I'll roll it, not to do anything to the soil, but just to tiller the grass, to break the single blade and make three or four grow instead. Never, never, never roll it immediately if sown it. That is a mistake because all you do is cap the soil and seal the seed in. But that looks fine. And certainly by the end of the summer, I'm going to have a most attractive piece of lawn there. The grass seeds germinated and grown in very well. In fact, it looks like a lawn, but it's reached the stage where it needs just tipping. Vitally important, the first three, four cuts on a new lawn, because there are things you don't do. You don't cut it close because that scalps it, and the grass is young, it hasn't a deep root system. You don't twizzle your lawn more round on it, so you bruise the tender young grass stems and create bald patches. And above all, you don't ever cut it when it's wet because that compacts the soil, it rubs the grass up. So I've taken a lot of care to make certain that soil conditions were right, that I sowed the grass seed at the right time. It's germinated, it's growing beautifully, and I don't want to spoil it now. Very important that you keep your lawnmower in good order, and particularly so when you're cutting young grass. And you set the blades by adjusting the height of the front roller. I wouldn't cut any lawn closer than three quarters of an inch. Gives you a much better sward. And the way I check it, I've got some balks of wood. This one's just under an inch thick, between the three quarters and an inch. And you just pop it under the sole plate like that. And the front rollers are resting on the lawn, which means I'm cutting it just about the right height. And the other thing that you must check is the tension of the cutting cylinder on the sole plate. That's the part that it cuts against. And you adjust that with the two screws, either side. Be very careful when you're playing about with the cutting area on a lawnmower that the thing's out of gear. You don't want the engine starting and removing two or three of your fingers. Just tip your lawnmower up like that and pop a piece of paper. In like that, and then just spin. Cuts absolutely clean. 
And you do that right along the whole cutting length because it's very easy to have it cutting right in one place and yet at the corners not to be adjusted fine. Absolutely clean, a clean straight edge. So that machine couldn't be in better condition. All I've got to do now is start it and I am no mechanic. I'm always delighted when the machine starts. It comes as something of a surprise. Always take the clippings off the new lawn. Never leave them on, no matter how great the temptation. Because if it lays in a heavy mat and you get wet weather, then for sure you're going to get fungus disease, fusarium in particular. And in my front garden, I've got a good, well-established lawn. And to keep it like that, I've got to work at it systematically right through the year. No use neglecting it at any stage. But to my mind, the most important part is the work that I do in the autumn. If there was an implement devised to break a gardener's back, it's a wire rake and yet there's nothing better for getting rid of the thatch of dead grass that builds up in the course of a season. Because my maintenance of a lawn consists of making the first three cuts in the early part of the year with the box on, with the cutter box on. And then after that, I take it off, except in very wet weather. But during the dry summer, all the time cut with the box off. And that builds up a thatch of dead grass. And you must get rid of that imperative otherwise you're stopping the winter rains going down and building up the water table in the subsoil you're cutting off light and air and it's like a farmer chain harrowing a field you tear the grass roots about and make them tiller you also make it very unhappy for weeds like speedwell Ooh, that is a curse and an abomination in a lawn. Very difficult to get rid of, but like a lot of other things, it doesn't like being pulled about too much. Your coarse grasses lifts them up, gets rid of some of the herbage. Look at the debris. I've only raked, what, square yard? That all unwanted material. Once you've got all the dead grass out of the way, the unwanted stuff, all the debris that's going to do no good at all, the next operation, and equally important, is to spike it. To get an ordinary garden fork, no special equipment needed, and you're breaking up the surface compaction because with being walked on, with being rolled with the lawnmower, you've compacted the surface area of the soil, the top inch, to such an extent that when it rains over the winter, the water can't go through. And your subsoil is bone dry, and I've seen this happen and happen and happen on a clay soil. You don't let the water in to fill up the low water table, which is vitally important. That's the moisture that's gonna keep your grass going right through the summer. So, <laughs> if this is the hardest work in lawn maintenance, then, Spiking's got to be the most monotonous. And you don't need any special equipment, an ordinary garden fork. Just push it in like that and don't lift it or raise it in any way because all you're doing is opening up air channels. If you lever it up, then you lift the turf mat and it makes the soil very uneven. And you space each row a fork holes, what, about six to eight inches apart. I reckon that's enough to get rid of any surface compaction. It lets in the rain to fill up the subsoil, which act as a reservoir against the following year. It lets the fertilizer in, and even more important, it lets the air in, because grass roots are like any other plant roots. If they can't breathe, they die. And letting air in and letting water in at this stage will really help the lawn to grow into that lovely green carpet.
Once you've got the lawn all spiked, the top dressing. Now, what sort of top dressing you use depends very much on the soil type. My previous garden was a very heavy clay, so I used a top dressing with quite a bit of coarse sand in it because I wanted to keep the air and drainage holes open as long as I possibly could. Otherwise, in a heavy clay, if you've got bad aeration, poor drainage, you get moss. And there's no way you can kill the moss yet, but it comes back again because you've cured the condition and not the cause. But this soil is fairly light, so my aim is more moisture retention. I'm trying to create exactly the condition you get naturally on a heavy clay soil. So this is a mixture of loam and peat and sand. It can be old tomato soil. It can be riddled compost. And don't worry if it goes down in heaps because you're going to brush it afterwards. Imagine the amount of grass energy you take off each year with the lawn mowing. If you put nothing back, then inevitably you're going to get starvation conditions. And that's when your lawn problems start. So you feed your lawn in the same way that you feed your herbaceous border or your vegetable plot. Now, when you've spread an area, just to give you a change of job, really, you get a, a besom. I couldn't do without a besom in lawn maintenance. No way. Does so many things. Brushes up grass mowings, brushes out dead grass, and spreads top dressing. Brush it backwards and forwards to work it down into the holes. I know that the winter rain will do that, but so often when I've put a top dressing on, it hasn't rained, it's stayed dry, and then it smears the grass, smears the top dressing over the grass, and kills it out in patches, which isn't good at all. By just brushing it like that, you work it down into the holes, down among the grass roots. And you do this always in the autumn. You're heavy raking to get rid of the, the thatch, and then you're spiking, and then you're top dressing. And then gradually over the winter, the rain will percolate that top dressing in. And the benefit comes the following summer when you've got a superb sward of grass. None of the problems that are attendant on a badly maintained lawn. You've got a lovely green sward that is the best background of all that I know to show your plants off. 